Vanadium Redox Flow Battery. The Vanadium Redox Flow Battery is an extremely interesting type of secondary battery, rechargeable batteries, that is based on the use of vanadium and uh, basically the concept that we are able to take advantage about the possibility of vanadium to exist in four different oxidation states vanadium 2 plus, vanadium 3 plus, vanadium 4 plus, and vanadium 5 plus. The capability of vanadium to exist in these four different oxidation states allowed us to build a batteries that involve as reagent only vanadium and play with these different oxidation state in order to drive current. So the vanadium flow battery is a real, real strange type of battery. Basically, it's a battery that is really uh, heavier, so we have a huge weight, and for the reason it's used, for instance, in stationary application, a lot, for instance, for in power, in electrical power grid. Basically, in the electrical power grid, which are the grid, the line, in order to uh, give to the consumer, the customer, electricity. So we have this line from the generations, for instance, in thermoelectric power station, we have the high voltage transportations, and then we can arrive to the final distribution. So these lines are, can be provided with vanadium redox flow battery. Why? Because they basically these batteries can act as tank, are able to store energy when the production overcome the consumption and maybe used in a second moment when the production is not able to meet the requirement for the consumer. And so basically they are able to uh, store energy in this way and are used in these types of plants for stationary applications since the weight is huge. And the weight is huge also co because obviously we are uh, looking for a water made battery but also because uh, these types of batteries involve the presence of specific tank specific vessel in which way. So we know that the vanadium redox flow batteries is based on the use of vanadium in different four oxidation state. And in particular if we want to drive here the galvanic chain of this system we have our current collector that are made of graphite because the electrodes are basically made of graphite in this case, sorry not chopper, graphite, so carbon matter. We have in the negative pole vanadium 2 plus and vanadium 3 plus in water. In the reality, we are in a basically acid solution with sulfuric acid. We will see what is the rule of sulfuric acid in order to increase the power, the final DDP of the battery later. Then we have obviously vanadium um, yes, 4. Vanadium 5, again in water, and again our current collector in graphite, our electrode in graphite in the positive terminal. So what is obviously clear looking here is that we have two different electrodes. The main difference with respect to conventional battery is that in conventional battery we have the reaction that is proceeding on the surface of the electrode. And often the electrode is involved in the reaction itself. For instance, in zinc air battery, or in general in metal air battery, we have described how the metal, the zinc, is asking from the electrode at zinc 2 plus during the oxidation. So the electrode matter is actually involved in the reaction. Here not. Here the graphite is acting only as a um, current collector. It's allow the passage of electrons and it's allowed to ensure the oxidations of vanadium and the reductions of vanadium, but basically it's not involved directly with a remotion of, for instance, species and in the case of zinc air battery. What is important here is that their reactions are localized due to the use of two different electrolytes. We have two different electrolytes that are separated with a proton exchange membrane. This is a proton exchange membrane. And here we have our graphite electrode, our positive electrode, always in graphite, 
And we have here the presence of vanadium 2 plus and vanadium 3 plus in acidic water due to the presence of sulfuric acid. And here we have vanadium uh, 4 plus and vanadium 2 plus. So basically, the working mechanisms, uh, remembering that at the very beginning, these types of vanadium in different oxidation state could be created just dissolving vanadium penta oxide in acidic solutions concerning sulfuric acid. But what is important here is that during, for instance, the discharging, during the discharging, spontaneously, at the negative terminal, we have the vanadium 2 plus it tends to be oxidized in vanadium 3 plus. So at the very beginning, if the uh, battery is completely charged, cosmetically we have charged it before due to different steps of electrical source, but at the very beginning our um, uh, battery is completely charged, we have only vanadium 2 plus in this electrolyte section, and also in the tank we have only vanadium 2 plus. And from the other hand, if the battery is completely charged, we have vanadium 5 plus, so this, as the single element present here, so only this one. 5 plus oxidation state of vanadium in this case, and 2 plus the oxidation uh, state of the vanadium in this case. 5 plus, because we know that oxygen is minus 2, so in order to have uh, one positive excess, uh, we have 2 atom uh, of oxygen, so minus 2 or 2 minus 4, we want to have a positive excess, and so this should be plus 5. So this is plus 5 as oxidation state of vanadium. So, this is a situation in which the battery is completely charged. What is happening is that uh, due to the, the when we want to connect this circuit and proceed with the discharging, this type of vanadium 2 plus start to become vanadium 3 plus. We have the conversion from vanadium 2 plus to vanadium 3 plus. And so, due to these oxidations, obviously, one electron is taken from this graphite support and is moving toward the external circuit in order to generate electricity and is collected here. We are feeling about the presence of this electron that is collected from one vanadium uh, 5 plus in order to be reduced in vanadium 4 plus. So, not more this species but this one. What is happened is that uh, since here we are increasing the negative charge, the negative excess, because we are moving electron in this case, in order to close the circuit, uh, one proton is moving from this point uh, in these directions through the proton exchange membrane that can allow the passage of only H plus and water. And what is happened is that this uh, uh, moving in this way is able to compensate the charge excess created due to the reduction because we have introduced electron in this way. So basically we are closing the circuit due to the movement of 1H+. We have so the oxidation at the anode during the discharging and we have the reduction, so the passage from this plus 1 electron plus 2H plus to give the vanadium 4 plus and water. When water is created, basically here, and it can migrate in the opposite directions again. So basically, we have this we have the oxidation, we have the reduction, and the if the reaction is proceeding more and more, each single V2 plus are converted in V3 plus with changes of electrons, and each single V vanadium 5 plus are converted in vanadium 4 plus. And so, with the time increase in this tank, what is happening is that we can start to appreciate vanadium 3 plus, and also in this 
tanks we start to appreciate vanadium four plus and when the battery is completely discharged we have no any more vanadium five plus here and no any more vanadium two plus here and also in the tank we have only vanadium three plus and vanadium four plus when the battery is completely discharged because this species and this species are the only one that is still remaining present so basically it is important to appreciate that in this case we are working with tank so we, since the reaction is directly present in the electrolyte we can tune the amount of energy in which way well we are only able to tune the dimension of the, of the tanks because if we are using tanks that are bigger we can introduce more vanadium and this means that uh, the process can uh, last for a measure time and so we can in introduce an amount of energy, the energy, just by increasing the tank volume. We can tune the energy increasing it. If we need a small energy, so we need that uh, the battery should work for smaller time, we can use a smaller tank. But if we want an application in which the energy should be huge, we can use a major amount of vanadium, so bigger tank. And we have pump that are responsible for ensuring the flowing of these species from the electrolyte zone to the tank. And so if it's true that with changing the dimension of the tank we can change the energy density, the energy, we can even change the power applying more than one cell in series, creating a stark, a real battery. So basically, if increasing the amount of vanadium, increasing the tank dimension means to increase the energy, we can even increase the power, so the total output voltage, putting in series different cells. Why? Because one vanadium cell is characterized by only 1.41 around voltage. So not extremely huge, but we can make this uh, uh, battery, this cell in, a sim, in a series or in parallel in order to create a huge big battery with a higher output voltage and improving the power. So basically we can improve the power connecting more cells and we can improve the energy connected uh, increasing the dimensions of the tank. And this is for what concerns the discharging process. But what happened during the recharging? Nothing different. So we have at the very beginning this vanadium 4 plus and this vanadium 3 plus applying a potential difference in order to ensure the, um, the opposite reaction we are passing from vanadium 2 plus leading to vanadium 5 plus and we have so the, an oxidation during the charging and we have the reductions of vanadium 3 plus in vanadium 2 plus. So this is start to become again vanadium um, 5 plus and one electron is taken. The flowing of the electrons follow a different pathway, the opposite one. Electrons are collected here and this is reduced again in vanadium 2 plus. And so basically in this way we are able to appreciate what is obviously in this case the flowing of H plus it will be in the opposite direction to compensate excess of charge in this case is formed here but the concept is exactly the same so it's an interesting rechargeable battery one important aspect even if we have some problem considering the weight is that the use of only vanadium as a reagent and the generation of the reactions in only inside the electrolyte without involving from a real point of view the materials of the electrode means that we can have less problem due to uh, redepositions for instance we have no problem of redepositions we have the, no the problems typical of a metallic battery because we have no side reaction we have no side reaction because we have only chemicals at the very beginnings was present in the tank and we are not involving the material of the electrode and this is an extremely important advantage because the lack of side reaction provides a superior lifetime and we can use this extremely stable battery for a lot of time but now one important last concept that is important to know about the vanadium redox flow battery is for instance 
um, why is important to work in an acid system and not maybe only in water obviously in order to ensure the driving of H plus from one side to the other one but why it's so important to work at very low pH this is crucial since we will see use an acidic uh, uh, electrolyte solutions in which the different steps of vanillins are dissolved is essential, essential in order to improve the final DDP so improve the final output voltage, improve the power. How we can demonstrate this? Just look at the next equation concerning this overall reaction. So, Why sulfuric acid is so important? Why we need to work need to work at low pH? The reason is that we are increasing the final output voltage. We are increasing the total potential difference. So, how we can demonstrate this? Let's consider for a moment the total free energy variation associated to, to the development of the reaction. So the total reaction, in this case, the sum between during the uh, discharging process uh, the sum between the first semi-reaction of oxidation plus the second semi-reaction of reductions give us something like this. So total reaction is equal to vanadium 2 plus plus vanadium 5 plus plus 2H plus to give Vanadium 3 plus plus vanadium 4 plus plus water. So basically, we are, I have just summed the first semi reaction and the second semi reaction in a discharging process, and so the total reaction overall is this one. <coughs> so now uh, concerning this uh, semi-reaction, the variation of free energy associated with the development of this reaction is equal to this equation, which we have here the logarithm of the product, the activity, on the product between the activity of the reagent. At square, since here we have this uh, stoichiometric coefficient. So now remembering from thermodynamics the relationship between this and this, so G is equal to minus Fe and G in standard conditions is equal to minus Mfe in standard condition potential reduction, we can say that the next equation in this case is equal to E is zero plus RT. And F in this case N is equal to 1 because we know that we have one electron that is exchanged for each single mole of vanadium involved in the reaction. So if one mole of vanadium 2 plus is oxidized in vanadium 3 plus, only one electron per mole is involved in the reaction. So N, the ratio between the mole of electrons and the mole of substances, is equal to 1. So we can uh, make this negligible. So, logarithm. Obviously, we need to uh, change the numerator and the numerator. So, activity B2 plus, activity vanadium 5 plus. Uh, okay. Activity vanadium H plus its square. 3 plus, 4 plus, and water. 
So now, uh, the smart things that we can do is take this parameter and collect it uh, outside, remembering that we can pass from logarithm base uh, e in logarithm base 10, so we can make this trick. What we can do is collect this one and in according with the property of logarithmic take it outside and we have plus ln10 rtf log of, uh, of uh, um, the activity of h plus at square. We can take this two and put it before in according with logarithmic properties. Now, uh, we can collect all these terms in a single constant, the same for what concerns this, and we have that E is equal to E0 plus K log of all these things, so all these things, plus 2 times log K, the same constant, log of activity of H Plus. But the activity, the log of the activity of H plus is equal to what? Is equal to minus pH. What does it mean? That since here we have a minus sign, if the pH is higher, we are decreasing this potential for something that is bigger. And so this total DDP is decreasing. Why the total one? Because I have considered the overall reaction. And uh, if the pH is low, we are subtracting something for something that is little. And so this is still remaining big. And this is the reason for which small pH, from a thermodynamics point of view, look at the next equation, is able to explain why we are able to provide with a low pH and higher power and higher GDP. So, Vanadium redox flow batteries are working with the use of this electrolyte in which vanadiums are continuously converted from vanadium 2 plus into vanadium 3 plus and vanadium 5 plus to vanadium 4 plus during these chargings and opposites. And this can provide a certain, in an extremely clean and smart way without side effect, a certain power, a certain electricity. But this power is higher only if our vanadium is dissolved in an acidic environment.